Previously on Narva 1944, we saw how the 3rd SS Panzer Corps was forced to retreat towards the Narva after the Luga River Line defences had been breached. Immediately after arriving at Narva, the Soviets managed to establish a small bridgehead, but the Battle of the Narva bridgehead will be covered in the next episode. Today we will take a look at what happened elsewhere. It is important to know what happened south of Narva to understand the Battle of the Narva bridgehead. So do keep in mind that the Battle of the Narva bridgehead was fought at the same time as the actions featured in this episode. By the first few days of February, the Soviet 122nd Rifle Corps managed to cross the river to the south of Narva at a settlement called Vaska. In doing so, the foundations of the Krivaso bridgehead were laid. The Soviet 314th Rifle Division crossed the river under murderous artillery fire and battered its way through the defences of the 29th Estonian Police Battalion. The Soviets quickly got to within reach of the Alveria railway station just 10 kilometers of Narva, threatening to cut off the 3rd SS Panzer Corps defending Narva itself. The fighting for the railway station was ferocious and deadly. The 314th Rifle Division took incredible losses and after receiving two regiments of the 125th Rifle Division to reinforce them, they finally succeeded in capturing Alveria station on February 6th, 1944. But after being pummeled by German artillery, the Soviets were forced to give it up again. After their defeat at the Alveria station, the Soviets remained more passive in the sector. This gave the German units at Narva valuable time to reorganize and reinforce their lines. Two days after the Soviets had established their Sivertsi bridgehead across the Narva, the Soviets undertook an amphibious operation at the town called Merikula, a quiet Estonian town along the coast. The aim of the Soviets was to outflank the Narva line by means of sea and try to put the pressure off of their recently established bridgeheads along the river Narva. As Mirikula was a coastal town, it fell under the command of SS Brigadeführer Kriesing's Kampfgruppe Küste. For Kriesing, the time couldn't have been any worse as he had just received the news that two of his sons had been killed in action in the ranks of the 5th SS Viking Division. Merikula was held by an Estonian police battalion, a naval coastal artillery battalion and the staff of the depleted 227th Infantry Division. They had been reorganized and renamed to Kampfgruppe Generalleutnant Berlin. Between Merikula and Hungerburg, the most northern part of the Narva River line, stood the men of the naval infantry battalion Hornschild. Hungerburg itself was defended by naval infantry battalion Schneider. During the night of the 13th to 14th of February, the men of the Soviet 260th Independent Naval Infantry Brigade traversed the Gulf of Finland towards their landing beaches at Merikula. As soon as they neared the beaches, the Soviet Marines started to disembark. As the month was February, the water must have been freezing cold. In spite of the ice-cold water, the Marines bravely waded forward. As they finally reached the beaches, the Marines quickly overwhelmed a couple of squads of the Hornshield Battalion. However, the rattling of the guns alerted the neighboring defenses and the fighting quickly spread to Merikula, which was rapidly captured by the Soviet attackers. The only building still in German hands was the headquarters of Kampfgruppe Generalleutnant Berlin. The Germans became aware of what was going on around them and not long after the Soviets had landed, the German artillery started to join the fight. Upon hearing the first shots being fired at around 3.30 am that morning, the Germans quickly sent out reinforcements towards the threat. The SS Reconnaissance Battalion 11 was also put in a state of high alert and the armoured cars were ordered to push the Soviets back into the ICC. At 5.30am the armoured cars and some stragglers they had picked up along the way reached the village of Merikula, where the headquarters of the Generalleutnant Berlin were still surrounded. After a brief firefight both units linked up with each other and the fighting could once again be coordinated. The Germans counterattacked at 9am that morning. Their counterattack was preceded by an aerial raid on the village itself, but the pilots, having been misinformed, started to bomb the German positions instead. Quickly a flare went up, warning the pilots of their mistake. 
The German counterattack consisted of a pincer movement and after an hour of hard fighting the Soviet beachhead was eliminated. The Soviets had lost just over 400 men killed and over 200 were captured. While the men under Felix Steiner were desperately trying to hold the Soviets back from the Narva River line, the Soviets made another organized assault on the German offensive positions at the Grivasso bridgehead. The bridgehead proved to be a wonderful jump off point for the attacks that were still to come. The Soviets came up with a plan to sever Steiner's corps together with all the defenders at Narva from the main German body. On the 15th of February, the Soviets made a new attempt to take the Alveria station. The 13th Rifle Division was attached to the 30th Guards Rifle Corps to aid them in their new offensive. The Soviets got to within 500 meters of the railway station until they were pinned down by German dive bombers. Nonetheless, they did manage to cut through the railway line at two places, thus cutting off the Narva defenders from supplies. It had however cost the Soviets dearly, the 30th Guards Rifle Corps deplored the loss of over 7,000 men. The Corps had practically ceased to exist. The Soviets continued their offensive at Alveria on the 20th of February 1944 when Fidyuninsky brought up his 124th Rifle Corps. The German 61st Infantry Division put up a gallant defence but in the end they had to give way to the 124th Rifle Corps. As the Soviets were making steady progress, the Germans were forced to allocate reserves to the threatened sector. Together with the Panzerdivision Feldherrn Halle and the 502nd Schwerer Panzer Abteilung, the 61st Infantry Division managed to drive the Soviet Rifle Corps back towards the river. The fighting lasted until the 28th of February when the 43rd Soviet Rifle Corps restored the situation. The initial threat to the southern flank had subsided, but that didn't mean that the fighting for the southern flank of Narva was over. On the 1st of March, the Soviets would attack again, this time with the newly arrived 59th Army under the command of Lieutenant General Ivan Korovnikov. Together with nearly 100 tanks, they attacked the defences of the 214th Infantry Division, some 20 kilometres southwest of Narva. After three days of incessant fighting, the 59th Army finally broke the German defences and raced towards the main highway leading towards Jöfi. But the German 214th Infantry Division, together with some Estonian battalions, kept resisting, forcing the Soviets to halt their advance. Nonetheless, Korovnikov had already given out the order to halt as he didn't have sufficient manpower and artillery to further support his advance. This yet again gave the Germans valuable time to shift units to the threatened sector and once again containing any possible breakout. The 17th of March saw yet another Soviet attack on the Alveria station. The 109th Rifle Corps and the newly arrived 6th Rifle Corps attacked the battered defences of the 61st Infantry Division. The 61st had already suffered thousands of casualties from the start of the Narva campaign and on the 17th of March they once again faced meager odds. The main objective of the new Soviet assault was the German headquarters at Las de Kodumagi, close to the Tallinn Highway, some 15 kilometers to the west of Narva. The Soviet 930th Regiment pushed through the defenses of the battered German division and they went straight towards the headquarters. The six Soviet T-34s which supported the assault were destroyed by two Tiger tanks under Lieutenant Otto Karius. Upon seeing the armor destroyed, the Soviets' attack faltered and the 930th Regiment retreated. The final Soviet attacks in the sector of the 61st Infantry Division fell on the 22nd of March. That day the German division reported to have repelled at least 10 Soviet attacks. Up north, in the actual defence of the Narva bridgehead, the 3rd SS Panzer Corps had also suffered multiple large-scale attacks, but those will be featured in the next episode. The attacks at Narva led to the exhaustion of the 2nd Shock Army. According to Estonian estimates, the Soviets lost some 150,000 casualties in the battles for Narva. Army Group Narva, on its turn, claims to have suffered 30,000 casualties. Despite the fact that the Germans still contained the situation at the Alveria station, the Soviet Krivaso bridgehead was still standing after a couple of months of desperate fighting. The German High Command wished to destroy the Soviet Krivaso bridgehead and for this task they created the Strachwitz Battle Group, named after its commander Hyacinth Graf Strachwitz von Kostzauche und Kaminetz. 
The battle group consisted out of the 170th, 11th and 227th infantry divisions together with multiple tanks. On the 26th of March 1944, the armoured count and his battle group attacked the positions of the Soviet 109th Rifle Corps, just south of the Tallinn Railway in what was known as the West Sack. Together with his Panthers and air support, Graf Strachwitz managed to break through the Soviet defences and he also managed to encircle the 72nd Rifle Corps and parts of the 109th Rifle Corps. The following day, March 27, the Soviets counterattacked, but their efforts went in vain as battle group Strachwitz managed to repel all Soviet attacks that day. By the 31st, the West Sack officially ceased to exist. With the elimination of the West Sack, there was still the problem of the East Sack. This Sack was defended by the 6th and 117th Rifle Corps. The German attack didn't come from the West, where Strachwitz had put up a great attack just days before, but it came from the Alviri Station. After heavy bombardment combined with air raids, the 61st Infantry Division and the Strachwitz Battle Group attacked. As the artillery bombardment had considerably softened up the defences, they were able to cut straight through the Soviet 59th Army. Leonid Govorov, commander of the Leningrad Front, was discomfited by the news and he sent in the newly arrived 8th Army to counter the threat. But it was too late for the Soviets, the 59th Army was already too exhausted to continue and on the 7th of April Govorov ordered his units to switch to the defence, rather than the assault. The 59th Army had lost a further 5,700 troops in the process. For his actions in eliminating most of the Krivaso bridgehead, Graf Strachwitz, who had led his men by example, was awarded the Knight's Cross with oak leaves, swords and diamonds. He was the 11th man to receive such an award. With the arrival of the Soviet 8th Army, any further German attempts to attack were repelled, and so the front once again became a stalemate. The threat to the southwest of Narva had finally subsided. The defenders of the actual Narva bridgehead were by that time still clinging on to their positions east of the Narva River. They had suffered immense losses, but more on that to come in the next episode of Narva 1944. Stay tuned! Don't forget to like and subscribe and do leave a comment down below. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Cheers!